Howdy, it's Ranger in the Loop's resident water park guru. Today we're looking at one of the nation's highest profile and best themed water parks, Universal's Volcano Bay. This park opened in 2017 and is part of the Universal Orlando Resort. Your visit to the park starts in the bottom level of a Universal Orlando parking garage. A less than magical bus will pick you up and transport you to Volcano Bay. Alternatively, you can get dropped off at Volcano Bay directly if you're not driving. If you're staying at a Universal Orlando hotel, a shuttle will take you to the park. Cabana Bay offers the best access though as it sits within easy walking distance of the park. When arriving on site, this tunnel begins to set the mood as you approach the entrance. A quick ride up this escalator and voila, you've been transformed into Volcano Bay, Universal's Hawaiian themed paradise. Upon entry, you are given a Tapu Tapu wristband which serves many different purposes. You can open purchase lockers, pay for food and supplies with a linked credit card, interact with kiosks to do things like shoot water cannons and take your picture. The most important function is reserving ride times though. The centerpiece of the park is this awe-inspiring volcano which towers over the rest of the attractions. Tropical vegetation and natural shade fill the park, making it arguably the best water park setting in the country. Sprinklers wet down the midways, which prevents painful walks that can be a major problem at other water parks. The slides even have these nets to store your shoes temporarily. It's clear the designers of this park had exceptional attention to detail and a solution to nearly every commonly reported water park inconvenience. Digital signs are located throughout the park which display wait times for the major slides. Any attraction that says right now can be enjoyed without making a reservation. For everything else, you will need to go to the attraction and scan your Tapu Tapu to receive a ride time. Your wristband will now count down the minutes until you can ride the desired attraction. In the meantime, you are free to enjoy any attraction marked right now. It's a great system and it reduces the amount of time you spend waiting in lines. On slow days, almost everything is a ride now and on busy days, the wait times will be so long it will be difficult to fit in more than a small handful of experiences. The Lazy River and the Fearless River can always be enjoyed without a reservation though, both of which are world class. The Lazy River, Kopi Kowai, carves a wide path through a large section of the park. It's a great way to relax between your reserved ride times. There seem to be plenty of tubes available even on busy days. If you're looking for more thrills though, head to Te Awa, the Fearless River. This is a fast moving rapids type river and it's among the park's best attractions. The setting is absolutely stunning as you carve through the volcano and past other slides. There's not a lot of time to enjoy the scenery though as the tides are continually pushing you down the stream at an aggressive pace. Note small children are not allowed on this attraction and life jackets are a firm requirement for all guests. A quick note about pronunciations, the park is Hawaiian inspired so the attractions have Hawaiian sounding names. I did find a pronunciation guide published by the park so I can assure you my pronunciations of all the rides are correct. The park's most popular attraction is the Krakatau Water Coaster and it is among the world's best water coasters. The visuals are just insane as you're cutting through the volcano, other attractions and the track itself. There's a ton of big drops and speedy uphill sections. Some of the hills offer great airtime, but others come up a bit short. There's no forceful helixes either, so not a ton of variety here. Still, with the tremendous ride length, great pacing, and multiple airtime hills, Krakatau is a borderline top three water coaster. Cranking the thrill meter all the way up to 11, we head to the top of the volcano and find three of the world's most intense water slides. 
These three opened as the tallest water slides in North America, the tallest being 125 feet and the other two just a hair under. The Kaoki Re Body Slide is a steep vertical drop slide. Tainui and Kala are twisting slides. I'll begin by entering a capsule and watching the floor drop out from underneath you. The Kaoki Re Drop Slide is pure speed. You can see much of the Universal Orlando Resort as you free fall and drop into a three and a half feet deep exit pool. The twisting slides don't rack up quite as much speed, yet might be even more terrifying. Kala is the longest enclosed slide of this type I have ever ridden, and it might be the longest in the world. The twists and dives are great and unpredictable, but having water splash into your face this long can make one panic and gasp for air. This will no doubt be a polarizing slide for that reason. Try to keep your head up and use your hands to keep water out of your face for a better ride experience. The third slide, the Tai Nui, is a similar experience to the Collet, but it was closed on my visit. I have seen reports indicating that it was closed for quite some time. Note that the maximum allowable rider weight for these two slides is 250 pounds as of 2022. Now let's take a lap around the park and see the rest of the slides. Honu is a multi-person raft slide. It features the world's first double wall element and a few spins along the way. The double wall features multiple moments of weightlessness and has some good speed for a raft slide. Ika Moana is the green colored slide on the same tower. This is more of a traditional raft slide and is definitely the most mild of the park's four raft slides. Granamaka Reef is the park's sprawling water playground. It's nestled right next to the volcano and intentionally blocked in so kids can't run away or get lost. The slides in this area look fun but are reserved for children. Near the Krakatau water coaster is a complex of inner tube slides called Taniwa tubes. These are mostly enclosed lengthy twisting slides. These slides are average in terms of thrills. The top choice is the blue slide on the back left corner. This tower has a conveyor to take your inner tubes up to the top for you, an extreme rarity for this type of slide. Along the back side of the volcano is the Punga Racers. These are body slides that used to be mat racer slides, but that's a story for another day. These are zippy and have 360 degree spins. They are smooth for body slides and are the easiest slides in the park to lap due to their short wait time. In the back corner of the park is a second set of large raft slides called Maku and Puihi. Maku is said to be the first raft slide to ever feature saucer turns. These are inclined discs stacked on top of each other to create interesting visuals and lateral forces. I do wish this slide had a greater variety of features. As it stands though, it is a good ride for the younger set though. Puihi is a little bit more intense. The slide contains two clamshell looking elements which the raft drops into and climbs the side of. You then rock back and forth before dropping out of the element. After the second one of these, a large drop rockets the raft into the exit pool. This is the second most intense of the four raft slides behind Honu. The last two water slides on the tour are Oya oh yeah and Oh No. These are twisting body slides which crisscross and empty into a deep pool. These slides do meander a bit, but each ends with a helix. The most thrilling part is a drop off ending in a 10 foot deep pool. You need to be able to swim a ways to get out, so this is for competent swimmers only. Now we circle back to the front side of the volcano and check out Waturi Beach, which is a wave pool. It's not particularly deep for a wave pool, but it sure is pretty with all the waterfalls dropping into it. The entry area is very long, creating a large area with shallow water. A slightly deeper pool called The Reef is adjacent to Waturi Beach. 
The giant volcano is an attraction in and of itself. This character, Vol, lives here and talks to guests and delivers a fountain and light show. The volcano can also be used as a pass-through to get from one area of the park to another. A couple of notes about the overall experience at the park. I was by myself on this visit, but the park generally made accommodations to pair me up with other groups when needed. You need to be part of a group to ride the raft slides, but I was able to ride the Krakatau water coaster by myself. The park is significantly busier on weekends than it is on weekdays. On the Tuesday I visited, Krakatau was the only ride that required a reservation. Everything else was a right now. The park was completely slammed the following Sunday though. Avoid weekends at all costs. As of right now, one day tickets cost $70 to $85 plus tax. This makes Volcano Bay the second most expensive water park in North America by my count, trailing only DreamWorks Water Park at American Dream. Volcano Bay tickets can be bundled to include other universal parks to get a better rate though. Don't forget that if you drive in a car, you will have to pay another $27 to park at the universal garages. Universal's Volcano Bay is no doubt a very special place. The raft slides, drop slides, water coaster, and Fearless River are all world class. The volcano is easily the best backdrop at any water park in the United States. So with all this, plus the tech of the Tapu Tapu bands, Volcano Bay is the world's best water park, right? I wouldn't argue with someone who came to that conclusion, but I wouldn't rank it in my top five water parks for the following reasons. First of all, it's probably going to be slammed unless you can come during an off-season weekday. Getting in and out of the park is clunky, and boarding a bus from a parking garage doesn't put you in the right tone to start the day. Most importantly though, there just aren't enough slides at the park. I would even argue Aquatica down the road has a more impressive list of slides than Volcano Bay. That being said, I still highly recommend this park for its beautiful setting and unique attractions. I think a lot of visitors will say that this is their favorite water park. Thank you very much for watching this review of Universal's Volcano Bay. Your views make it possible for us to go on a lot of these trips. If you want to see more water parks, I've made reviews of many of the nation's best including DreamWorks Water Park, Schlitterbahn, and all of the aquatical parks among many others. Our very own legend makes regular trips to Universal and other Orlando attractions if that's more your style. Either way, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Ranger signing off.